being asked. Let's see, hold on. Hi guys, I don't know if I'm saying all this twice because I thought I was live and then I didn't know. So if you guys, if I did and you're seeing this all again, well, I apologize. Today's live stream class is going to be all about gel polish and uh, builder gel and extensions and basically anything in the world of gel and its application as well as some troubleshooting because I know that gel can be kind of a big pain in the butt, especially if you aren't used to it. And I have a whole table full of gel products next to me that we will be looking at. But before we get into that, I do want to just thank everybody that participated in January's live class because I had a much bigger turnout than I expected and there was so much participation. There was questions flying around. We had discussion and it was fantastic. So thank you to everyone who participated last month and who is here and ready to go this month and who is interested in future classes. And if you are not part of my email list yet, I know I keep saying this, but uh, send me an email to hot pink zebra polish at hotmail.com and I will get you on the email list and you'll get a nice little email sent to you a week before the classes that say time and date and then also all of the, you know, products that you need to have on hand to participate and not for these first two classes but for future classes there's also going to be some media that you may need to really fully participate so things like images that I want everybody to have and uh, templates possibly and just things of that nature that it would be really nice for everyone to be able to see and have in front of them as we are going through things so if you aren't on those lists or on that list yet send me an email and we will get that going and hello everybody so we're going to start out I'm just gonna go over our game plan so I want everybody to just check their supply list um, I have it up on my phone and I'm just going to share it in a second and then we're going to talk a little bit about product safety it's very similar to last month's acrylic class so even if you don't do acrylic and you want to swing back to that same safety, then you could see, you know, basically it's the same, same precautions. And this isn't client safety. It's more like mail tech safety. If we get into client safety, that's a whole nother bag of cats. Um, then we're going to look at every type of gel that I have kind of broke down for you, which is seven different varieties, even though there's like infinite number of varieties of gel, which I'll talk more about that too. And then after we get done with all of that technical stuff we're going to be sculpting a French with some hard gel which in my mind is a really difficult task because it is kind of like sculpting something that's precise out of the texture of honey and that just does not usually compute so we'll go over some tips and tricks for that and then we're also going to be sculpting a nail with poly gel and poly gel is you know there's a thousand names for that too I hate that's the thing that bugs me the most about gel is that the same product can have every single brand out there can give it a different name. And so when you're looking at, you know, different brands and different products and you're looking at a video and somebody says that they're using this product, you may have something that is virtually the same thing at home or at your salon, but it, you may not think that you do. So that's one thing that is just kind of crazy with gel. So now we're going to just go over it and we're going to check our supply list. So the general supply list for everything is a gel brush, a paper towel, base and top coat, some files, and some practice nails. So that's the things that you need for both of the two nails that we're going to be working on. And then for the first one that we're going to do, that French tip, um, we're gonna need some sculpture gel, some color gel, which could be, there's color gel in a pot, and then there is gel polish, clear builder gel, and then a brush cleaner, or just something to wipe your brush off with. That can be isopropyl alcohol, that can be specific brush cleaner. I know there's some brands that have brush cleaner. That can be, and what I like to use that I have mixed up in a bottle is 75% um, 75 strengthening nail polish remover. So this is just lacquer remover with 25% acetone. So it's my own little mix of stuff. So that's my favorite thing to use. The strengthening remover I find keeps my brushes better. If you just go and dip your brush straight into acetone, over and over and over again, it's going to ruin your brush really fast. So if you dilute it with something that is meant to strengthen your, you know, your nails or your brush, it's going to increase the longevity of your brush infinitely while that little bit of acetone that's in there cleans it really well. So that's what I use and what I've been using for a very long time to clean my gel brushes. So that's for the first nail, it's gonna be the French tip. 
And then for the second one, we're gonna need poly gel of some species and then a slip solution, which can also be your isopropyl alcohol or a specific slip solution, which pretty much the majority of brands that make an aqua gel or poly gel have a brand specific poly gel or slip solution for their poly gel, even though you don't really need to use it. So if you wanna save a little bit of money when you're getting into a new system and you can omit that step, just grab a bottle of isopropyl and good to go. And then just some gel polish, just to add a layer of color on top of this. Plus we can talk about some gel polish application specifics for that. So now to get into the safety, some of this I hope is obvious to everybody that's using gel. If it isn't, you know, you may just want to reevaluate your practices a little bit. The first one is don't touch any gel product. Don't let gel touch your skin, touch your client's skin. If you're working on clients, just try to keep all of that off of you. Gel is so easy to develop an allergy to. And you see it, if you work in a salon, you see it because clients will develop allergies to it. And sometimes it's really quick, a couple, you know, exposures and, you know, a client may have a allergy. And then as a nail tech, if you have exposures and you have a couple of exposures and then all of a sudden you can't use any gel products, that is devastating to your career, to your pocketbook, to everything. Because there's some people that even through two pairs of gloves can't use gel because it just creates this contact dermatitis like no other. So if you are somebody that is intending to, you know, have a nail career and use gel products and be able to do it off into the future, make sure that you're keeping gel off of your skin. And that's as easy as putting on a pair of gloves or just being ridiculously cautious. Then the next thing is apply in thin layers, which can seem kind of contradictory when you're working with really thick products like Sculpture Gel, Builder Gel, Aqua Gel, and you want to get a little bit of height on the nail that you're working on. The thing is, is this is not as specific to Aqua Gels, but to any of the liquid gel products, which Sculpture Gel, Builder Gel, Nail Polish, Gel Polish. You want to apply in thin coats so that it can cure completely. Because if you have, you know, a layer of gel here that's pretty thick and the light that's curing it doesn't hit all of the layers and you get these film layers of uncured gel between the cured gel, that can seep out. And if it does seep out, it's going to touch somebody's skin, which is going to cause a reaction, potentially. And not only is it going to do that, it's a huge mess, which is just no fun. And it's also going to compromise the strength of the enhancement especially if it's something like a builder gel. It's going to make it so that nail's weak, it may break, it may cause a nail infection if it creates a leak under the seal of the nail, it may get you know, icky stuff underneath there and then you're gonna get bacterial growth and fungus and ooh, so much fun stuff. So just make sure that you're applying in relatively thin coats and then building up the layers and the strength progressively. You don't wanna try to rush into things and you don't want to do anything with gel with a, you know, just like a, speedy type mindset because it's going to cause problems. One of my favorite things that helps with preventing kind of that mindset of rushing is I always flash cure my clients nails. So they're doing, you know, a builder gel set because most of my clients are actually builder gel, which is a weird kind of thing because I'm, I consider myself to be an acrylic person yet I do gel on everybody it is that after I do, depending on the person, I'll either flash cure after two nails and I use a flash cure flashlight or I flash cure after the four fingers and I put them into my lamp for 10 seconds. I have a, a 10 second setting, flash cure setting before I do the thumb because if, because my builder gel is a builder in a bottle that I typically use. So it's very, fairly thin. And so if you're, you know, you're working on a client's hand like this and then they tip their hand to give you their thumb then all of these nails, the gel is going to run down and it's going to hit their sidewall. It's going to create a very lopsided, uneven enhancement. And it's just going to, best case scenario there, it's going to give you more filing. Worst case scenario, it's going to, you know, give your client an allergy and then you lose a client. And it's just an unfortunate situation. So remember that you always need to do things in thin layers so you prevent running off and just flash cure often. The other thing, and this is when I had a idea for giving you guys a little visual, but I did not bring my stuff over, so oh well, is to remember that fumes don't always have a scent and that gel, as it's curing, is going to off-gas and 
a lot of times, a lot of salons think that if they're a gel only salon, they don't have to worry about ventilation. And this is more of an institutional problem and less of a, you know, somebody that's working at home sort of a problem. But if you have nail techs all lined up in a row, only using gel products, and they have the mindset that I'm safe because it's gel, it's not going to off gas. Pretend you have a spoon. <laughs> I was going to bring a spoon over and peanut butter. Pretend you have a spoon came fresh out of the dishwasher, you just hand washed it, whatever, it's clean. That's your air. Your spoon is your air. Now, if you think of acrylic and you think of, ooh, fumes, I can smell it. So pretend you're dipping into peanut butter. That's your fumes from acrylic. You can tell that they're there. You can see it. It's obvious. You know, nobody's going to question whether or not there's fumes in the air and there's going to be a lot more of a conscious effort in remo removing the fumes. So then you lick off the peanut butter. Peanut butter's gone. Spoon looks clean, but is the spoon clean? No, it is not. It is covered in my germs. And so I'm holding my imaginary spoon like a crazy person. But that is kind of the thought is that the fumes are still there. You can't smell them. You can't see them. And yet there they are all over the place. And that's because as the gel cures, it has the same basic principle as acrylic when it cures. It just cures in a lamp instead of by, you know, the two part LP system. And so it still has, still has the same potential hazard. And the other thing with gel to consider is it really hasn't been out that long. Gel has like a 15 year time frame. I, if I'm remembering correctly, it was so long ago since I read all this information in nail school. It was probably 15 years ago when I was in nail school. So 23 years ago now, but it hasn't been out that long. So who knows what, you know, respiratory ramifications it's going to have that people are going to start seeing 10 years from now, whatever. So if you are using gel a lot and you don't have an open system or a nail source capture system, just kind of be conscious of it. And then the other thing, I kind of touched on this, but always fully cure. I'm, yeah, I went out of order in my safety, but that's just, you know, make sure that you always fully cure everything, apply it in thin layers, remember that your air is necessary to your life, and just don't touch the gel. So that's the basis of all of my safety precautions. So we're going to now talk about the different types of gel. So I brainstormed and I came up with a list of seven and then I came up with about 30 more <laughs> and then I cut my list back down to my original seven. So these are the ones that you're probably going to encounter the most often and most of my other ones were ones that were like a specialty type of gel like spider gel, foil gel, blooming gel, etc. Those are ones that I would consider like art add-ons. These are the ones that I would say are the most often used. So most typical is going to be your polish, gel polish. Gazillion brands of the stuff. There's so many different variances with it, but that's like your most common thing that you're probably going to use in a salon or on yourself. Then there's gel paint, builder gel, sculpture gel, poly gel, jeweler gel, and 40 gel. And I have these ordered in viscosity from thinnest to thickest. And just in case somebody doesn't know what the definition of viscosity is, that would be the texture and the thickness. So a thin viscosity is going to be a gel polish that's very thin, sometimes even water-like. I've used some gel polishes that are amazingly thin in texture. And then the thickest viscosity being 40, something that does not run even one iota. So now for gel polish, like I said, it has a thin viscosity. And it is, the main purpose of gel polish is just for the color. Typically, gel polish is not used for strength. I do know some people that use gel polish on their nails to help them grow out because it does have, you know, a little bit of added protection, but it's not made for strength. It is a really good product for natural nails if you want, like I said, just a little bit of strength added, and it is self-leveling. So all of that, I'm going to go through kind of like the basics for each kind, and the two main things that I want you guys to focus on is the viscosity and whether or not products are self-leveling. Because I think when I'm looking at gel products, those are the two most important things for me to determine whether they're going to do what I need them to do. So the next one is going to be gel paint, and that's got a thin to medium viscosity. And it really depends on the brand, because I've used some gel paint that's about the same texture as gel polish, and I've used some that in my mind are so thick I can barely paint with them. So for me, I tend to lean toward the ones that are on the thinner side. And the ones I'm going to show you guys today, later on when we do some artsy fartsy stuff, is the Ugly Duckling gel paint. Because of the ones that I've tried, those are my favorite, but I don't love gel paint. I think it's kind of hard to use. 
I like to use acrylic paint for fine details and art instead, just on a normal basis because I can have a lot better control with it. Gel paint is highly pigmented. It is made for art. It is made for doing artsy things and it will not self-level or spread. So when something self-levels like gel polish, you apply you know, some strokes down the nail, it'll kind of even itself out so that you don't see the strokes anymore. Gel paint won't do that, at least typically. And so if you put the strokes down the nail, you can create some effects with it because you can play around with it. So if you want something to be a smooth canvas, gel polish. If you want something to be able to build some texture in, gel paint or as well as like the artsy stuff. And for doing really thin line work, gel paint's going to be better because it won't spread out. And gel polish usually will kind of feather a little bit unless you cure it or flash cure it really often. The next one is builder gel. That's what I typically use on my clients. It comes in a couple different standard forms. So the ones I have here to show you is this is the gel bottle. This is what I use on my clients all the time. Um, it is, this is their clear. And the reason I use the gel bottle inks um, a builder in a bottle is I really like the whole system of it. The bottle is nice and square, which may not mean something to some people, but I like it because I can open it easier. And for me, that's a big deal because I can't get anything open. I have the weakest hands on earth. So if a bottle is square, I can hold it and <laughs> I can open it so much easier. And it's got a really nice texture. It is very thin, even for builder gel, which for me, I, I like because I can get it out of the bottle. It's not going to get stuck in the corners as much. And it just seems to hold up really well for my clients. So this is one brand of gel. But then another thing, another one, I have this Orly gel effects builder in a bottle. The biggest difference between these two is that gel bottle ink is a hard gel. Orly gel effects is a soft gel. Now, when you're thinking hard gel, soft gel, there's basically one major difference. This one can be soaked off with acetone. This one cannot. And so if with you, if you're doing something on a client and they want something temporary, they need a little bit of strength because they're going to a wedding or they're going on vacation. A soft gel is a much better option. It is not as durable. It is not going to add quite as much strength, but it can be removed easily. Whereas a straight out hard gel like the gel bottles is a, it's not soak off. It is super strong. Clients can do almost anything. I very rarely have issues with clients having breakage or lifting even with this product because it is fantastic. So that's Builder in a bottle, but Builder also comes in jars. So this is on Vogue's Simply Clear and it is their smooth texture. So this is where I was saying that brands come up with all these different names for their different types of gel instead of using what I think of as the obvious terms, Builder, Sculpture, etc. They use things like smooth. This one is super self-leveling, which is where they got the name smooth from. So I like this one. Um, it comes in a pot instead of in a bottle. So you do have to have a separate gel brush if you're going to use something like this instead. But otherwise, the actual product, obviously different brands, there are differences, but it's pretty much the same thing. And the great thing with Builder Gel is that you can build enhancements. and Or you can just add a layer of it over the top of a nail to give it some, some little strength if you don't wanna do like a full on enhancement, but you can create an entire enhancement out of Builder Gel. So then the next one is going to be Sculpture Gel. So that is, for me, the one I'm using is today is going to be on Vogue's Modeling Resin. Again, not Sculpture Gel. It doesn't say Sculpture Gel anywhere on it, but it is. And if you want to have a kind of idea of how to tell when they don't say names of what it is, is if you open the jars, and I know I'm not wearing gloves and I'm kind of breaking my own rules here, but. I'm gonna be careful. Open the jar. If you look in it and you start to tip it, if it starts to move, builder gel, which you kind of are playing Dairy Queen right here because they tip over their ice cream cones. So if it starts to move when you tip it over, it is builder gel. If you tip it on its side and it doesn't really go anywhere, it is something thicker like sculpture gel. So sculpture gel is really great if you are making a nail bed with it and you don't want to use poly gel. Poly gel would definitely be my go-to but if you don't want to use poly gel then a sculpture gel would be the next best option. It is not as thick as poly gel 
and it has a little bit a little bit more of a elegant finish I think than poly gel does I think poly gel sometimes looks a little bit powdery or thick or something in the end whereas this just looks really clean and you can sculpt things out or with it very thin whereas poly gel doesn't always go thin because it if you file it too much it just comes off the nail plate in my experience especially right along the proximal fold if you file it down too much and try to really blend it down to the natural nail it'll just file the whole thing off also poly gel I think is really soft and it wears down easily so if you you know if you don't want to use poly gel for any of those reasons, then Sculpture Gel would be the best thing for sculpting a nail bed. And it won't self level, which is also helpful for sculpting a smile line or a nail bed. Nail bed. So the next one we're going to be talking about is poly gel. And this is a great example of when there's a thousand names for something. And I have four of them for you. I have four brands that I dug out of my archives. And I put everything so far away from me. So I have Madame Glam's Poly Gel, and it says Poly Gel. I have Wildflowers, and theirs says Paste. I have Gel 2. Theirs says 4D, and I have a separate category for 4D gel. This is not 4D gel. This is Acrogel, even though it says 4D gel. I disagree. And then we have Ugly Ducklings, and theirs does say Acrogel on it, but it also says it's Velveteen. So we have one that's called Acrogel, one that's called Paste, one that's called 4D Gel, and one that's called Poly Gel, and they're all the same thing. Isn't that just crazy? These things are what boggles my mind about gel, because acrylic, you don't, you don't have that. You have, you know, your powder and your liquid, and there's no other craziness. It's pretty straightforward, whereas gel is not straightforward. It is a crazy different thing and if you start looking at gel and if you are somebody that's just going to kind of get into it and you look at a website like in Vogue's and there's all these different types it's going to be a lot of information that's going to make no sense to you so I hope that if you know you're new to gel if you have any questions uh, don't hesitate to you know ask me I'm definitely I'm definitely here I've got you know I've got some help for you but that's poly gel and it's got a very thick viscosity meaning that it is something that they even provide you with if you have a poly gel brush it has two ends typically one end is going to be a knife tool for cutting it off of the tube and then the other end is your brush so you can tell how thick it is because you have to cut it off of the tube and if you've never used it before it's really very interesting to work with the great thing with that is you can put a little bit on all five nails and then you can press it out with your brush and sculpt it and it's not going to go anywhere. It's not going to move. It's not going to, you know, run. Really, it's almost infallible in that way. And you can continue to manipulate it until you're happy with it, which is generally, this, you know, the theory with gel. But sometimes if they run, that just doesn't quite work. But with poly gel, it's, you know, it, where you put it is where it's going to stay. It is definitely made for building length on nails. I would not ever, if somebody came in with natural nails saying that they wanted, you know, just a little overlay to keep them from breaking, poly gel is not where I would go because it is too thick. And I have one client who uses poly gel and her nails are very long, but she waits a long time between uh, fills. It's like six to 10 weeks usually. And by the end of it, her coffin shape is almond because poly gel wears so much. It is very, very soft. Makes it easy for filing, but it also makes it so that the shape just wears a lot, which really bugs me and makes me less eager to use it. But one place where I do use poly gel is if I have somebody that is one of my builder gel clients and they break a nail, I will use poly gel on my form because it's easier to use and I'll build out basically my nail tip with the poly gel and then I'll use a layer of builder gel over the top to add that really nice hard unbreakable finish on top of it so poly gel has its place I'm not overly in love with it just in general so our next one is jewelry gel and this one is more of like one of those specialized types of gels that I wasn't going to include except for the fact that I use it so often on my channel I just had to include it and there's all, I've gotten a lot of questions about it since I have uh, started using it and so the one I have I'll show you guys today this one is off of Amazon it is 
a just a UV, it's called blue gel from them. But if you look up jewelry gel, you'll find a bunch of options. I've been using this tube, tube jar for about a year, give or take. And I don't know if you guys can see, there's a lot left in it. A little of this goes a really long way. So if you see a jar and it looks really tiny, don't be discouraged by the fact that it isn't that much because it really, a little goes a very long way. And so it's perfect for attaching embellishments and glitter placement. It is so underrated for glitter placement. If you're going to do anything with a lot of glitter, even if it's just like a couple bigger pieces and you want them to stay put in an encapsulation, that is the stuff for it. And it's not self-leveling leveling at all, but it's just basically it, it does what it says. It attaches jewelry to the nails. It's pretty self-explanatory. And then the last one we're going to be talking about is 4D gel. So another circumstance of a gazillion names. I have two here. This is Glitz Accessories and such. They call theirs 4D gel. Thank goodness they kept it easy for me. And then I have Wildflowers Lace Paste. Wildflowers in general create some unique names for their products, but these are both 4D gel. Um, I actually really like the Wildflowers one. It works really easy. It holds its shape. But so 4D, 4D gel may be tempting to use for like sculpting a smile line or a French tip, but it is not strong. It is not made for strength. So you really don't want to do that. Um, it just... It's just for art. It's perfect. It's the easiest thing for making little flowers. If you have clients like little 3D flowers, it is fast, it is easy, and it creates beautiful flowers. With the help of a couple silicone tools, you guys are like on the way, but not for building up nails. It, and it won't self-level, so same thing. If you sculpt something with it, it's going to stay that way. All right, so now I guess we can kind of get into working on some of our little projects here. I'm going to take a drink really quick because I, I don't know if you guys can hear my voice. It is dying on me. I have huge mugs because I'm too lazy to make tea very often. Okay, let there be light. All right, so the first thing we're going to do here is I'm going to show you the tips that I'm going to be using. Move all of this junk out of the way. So the tips I'm using are, again, from Amazon. I like to get a lot of my kind of unimportant products off of someplace like that. Uh, Amazon, eBay, because it is way cheaper. So these are just some nail tips. I'm going to pull that lid off because it bugs me. Um, so here they are. They're nice coffin coffin tips. The thing when you're buying cheap nail tips, which I would consider, you know, these to be, is that they, let's look at the flexibility because these aren't, they're not very flexible, which is fine for doing practice tips. It is not something that you would long-term want to try to glue on and wear because it's not going to conform to the natural C curve of your nail. So just if you are wanting to use something off of a website like Amazon, just use some caution when you're getting them because they're not going to be the same quality as a more expensive, higher quality nail tip. And there's a huge difference in them. And also if you're making like press-ons for people, this is on all of them though, that little, we're going to get rid of the little plastic nub on the tip. And then we're going to stick these on. This is just some poster putty. All right, so we're gonna begin with the one that is the French tip. So I'm gonna put my gloves on before I go too far into this. And I'm gonna grab all of the gel products that I'm going to use. I'm just gonna keep them close by so that I don't have to go digging through my pile. We're going to be using the modeling resin from on Vogue, well for me, which is your cover pink sculpture gel. And this one is called Blush. Then we're going to be using on Vogue's Clear Smooth and a gel polish color. For me, this is Madame Glam's Floris, which is a personal favorite of mine. And it is just such a nice neon pink. So the first one we're going to use is our 
our sculpture gel. So we're going to open up this jar. Like I said earlier, if you tip it, it's not really going to go anywhere. It's pretty much, it is what it is. The one thing to keep in mind with gel is, as you can see, I know you guys can tell that, it's a little separated, which is one thing that I actually find to be incredibly irritating about gel, is that it separates. So we're just going to give this a quick stir just to make sure that it's completely homogenous. Okay. Don't stir too vigorously when you're stirring it. You mean, obviously, stir, but if you, like, whip it, it's going to get air bubbles. And those air bubbles, especially in sculpture gel that's really thick, they're not going to just rise to the surface and pop. They're going to show up in inconvenient times. I've got that. I'm going to put some of my brush cleaner in a dappen dish. And then we're going to grab a gel brush. And I've actually never used this gel brush. As you guys saw, I've used Builder in a bottle as much as I can, so I don't have to use a gel brush because it's just, it's like two for one when you can use a bead. So we're going to pick up a bead of our sculpture gel. And I'm using quite a bit. I mean, this is a size zero tip, so it's a really big tip. And we're going to invert our hand so that the brush is pointing towards the tip of the nail. You don't want to try to do it this way and then you know, walk it down. I've seen people do that. I don't think that's easier, but I guess, you know, you can if you'd like to. So we're going to place that down. We're going to just kind of work it up. And that creates the very middle point of our smile line. And then I'm going to bring it up the sides, kind of using a swirling motion with my brush to guide it in the location or in the direction that we're trying to go. And then bring some of this back down. And then repeat for the other side, swirling the brush on up. And then you can kind of push it to try and perfect your smile line. Um, when you're working with gel like this, it isn't as easy to get that nice, clean smile line, at least for me. Like I said, I consider making a French tip out of liquid gel to be about the most difficult thing that you can do for nails. So then we're just going to blend some of this up so it's not such a crazy big lip. Perfect it a little bit more if we want to. If you really want to try and get this perfect, we're going to, what you're going to do is you're going to want to clean your brush, so dip and wipe to get rid of the gel residue, and then sort of just drag it right along the line of your smile line, brush it down, then clean your brush again, and repeat for the other side. Tuck it in at the tip. And then at this point, we're going to cure this. And I know that it might be tempting to try to go in and fill that in before you cure it, but like I said before, I just think it's easier to cure more often. And I'll give you guys a kind of a view of the height I see the height that has been built up there. Not much, very, very minimal height, but we're going to cure this anyways. So I'm going to take and I'm going to stick it in my lamp for 60 seconds and just let that cure. And while that's curing, I'm going to kind of give you guys some options for how to fill in the tip. So you can use a gel polish because you can layer gel polish inside a gel enhancement. And you don't have to worry about anything else. You can just do layer, 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 and it's really no problem. You can even layer gel polish inside an acrylic enhancement. Um, if you're going to do that, I would recommend applying a top coat, a gel top coat, and then slightly buffing it so that there's no inhibition layer from the gel interfering with the layers of acrylic. But you can do that for the color too. If you have a gel polish color that you want as underneath the clear of your acrylic, if you're doing, you know, depending on what it is, there's just some different effects that you can great create. You can definitely do that instead of painting it on top of the acrylic. So if you ever want to do a gel polish color as your French tip color, that certainly works. So then, like I said before, you can use gel polish or gel color. And I don't know if I went over this or not, so we'll talk about it again in case I didn't say it. If you see something that's called like gel color in a pot or color gel or something of that nature that doesn't use words like gel paint or art gel or you know one of those other 
add-on words. It's basically gel polish that just comes in a pot and you apply it with a brush like this so you would dip it in and then you'd paint the nail. Those typically are slightly more pigmented than gel, you know, your gel polish that comes in a bottle, but there's very little difference. So now we're going to grab another big glob of our our sculpture gel. We're going to just kind of roll it and we're going to start at the cuticle area and then roll it around. As you can see, I got an air bubble. I'm just going to take and pop that, but then kind of work it right along the cuticle line. And if you're doing this on a client, you're going to want to, you know, be conscientious that you're not touching their skin. I hate to feel like I'm repeating myself, but I've just seen so many cases of bad judgment when it comes to negligence on the nail techs part with gel, both with co-workers and people that I've seen that are doing YouTube tutorials or Instagram tutorials where they just don't use, you know, any caution for what they're, what they're doing. And I know that in, I think it's Europe, there's a huge problem with reactions and allergies. Okay, so we've got this going over and we've smoothed out that entire area for the most part. If you want, you can kind of dip your brush and zigzag it to fill in low spots and kind of connect the dots. But this isn't the end layer. This is just kind of the middle layer. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. And if you're doing this on a client, I would flash cure this nail and then do the next one flash cure and go down the line that way. And then at the end, when I did all five, then I would do my full cures. So we're going to cure this one again. And then after that cures, we're going to do one more layer of the nail bed color before moving on, which is time consuming. And there are some sculpture gels that are thicker in viscosity, and then you can build that smile line a little bit quicker. But the one that I could find is just a little bit thinner than I would probably recommend using if you're going to actually be doing this. I This is not something that I would recommend necessarily, but uh, CND's Brisa gel I, is what I learned with when I was in nail school. And I actually, I threw it all out because I couldn't stand it so much, but they have a nice thick consistency on some of them that if you want to be doing the gel sets, you could give that one a try. I personally did not enjoy working with it. It was just a little too thick and stringy for my taste. All right, so that's cured. Can pull that back out of the lamp. And then we're gonna do one, one more bead in this one. So I've got a pretty nice start to blending it down at the back. We're gonna just create a little bit more of an apex and then try to bulk up that smile line a touch. This is going to be our biggest scoop of gel yet. So I'm gonna place that bit down and then grab another one. If you guys are looking into gel brands and you're just kind of starting and you wanna build a, kind of build an inventory, I really do like on Vogue's products for their, their sculpture products, filter gels and these modeling resins. They're all really nice. They're easy to work with. They're easy to file. The shape of the jars I really like. They look elegant as far as you know client perception too, which may or may not mean anything to anybody. But if you do want to try to keep kind of an elegant vibe, they do look very nice. All right, so we're building this up and we're gonna take it back over the smile line, drag it back along that way, kind of bring it out and down and then do it on the other side. Do not worry if your smile line is not flawless. In fact, don't even expect it to be flawless. Like I said, you're making something that's pristine out of honey, so be nice to yourself. <laughs> don't, don't sweat it too much. Just get it pretty good. And then I'm going to say that this is good. I'm going to call it. I'm going to put it in my lamp once again. By no means perfect, but then we're going to close this and then we're going to have to clean. We're going to have to cleanse that. So to cleanse it, we've got 
some isopropyl alcohol. If you guys don't have these types of containers that you just push down and they, here, I've got my little you know, like, just pump them, then you can do it. So somebody just said, what country are they from? Shipping is expensive. So on Vogue does not ship directly from their, from the company. So you can't just go to their website and ship. You have to find a distributor. But if you go to their website, you can, there's a distributor search. And where, I don't honestly even remember where I bought, because I bought some of their spider gel. A lot of my Anvil products I got in NTNA, and I just haven't used them up yet, but I will replace them once I do. And I'll have to figure out what the distributor <laughs> was. But they had distributors listed for multiple multiple countries and I think the shipping for what I did was I was really impressed it was a flat rate it was like five bucks and if you want to place a big order it was still five dollars so I didn't think that was too bad considering some places shipping is whew, you know can be really expensive and it came incredibly quick and I can look it up and I can figure out what the distributor was and I can stick that in the description box later tonight so I'm going to cleanse this and really just make sure I cleanse it well when you're using these little nail wipes and you're trying to prevent cross-contamination and prevent your clients from exposure, there is inhibition, the inhibition layer is on this nail wipe. So do not continue to use the same one over and over and over again. You can still use it, like, you know, probably do all 10 fingers with this one, but if it starts to feel tacky at all, you're going to want to throw this away and get a new one. It's not going to clean as well if you leave, you know, because it's got like a little layer of gel in it. And then if you're wiping it and you're going like up and around the whole nail, it's going to get on their skin that way too. So if you want to be extra cautious, which I would always recommend, saturate it, press it down, wipe it down towards the free edge. Hold it down, wipe it down. Because then you're going to prevent that, you know, possibility. And anytime you can just do a little bit of prevention and, you know, possibly, you know, keep somebody from developing an allergy or reaction, that is a great thing to do. So now we've got it so far. I'm not going to worry about how lumpy it is like in this area and all of that. I'm only worrying about the smile line right now. So I'm going to hold this. It's really going to want to fall off my little nail stand, but we're going to try our best here. We're going to hold it and we're going to file it. We're using a straight edge file that is fairly firm. So you don't want to use a file that bends really easy. This one has flexibility to it but it's not too too terrible um, it has a wooden core which helps with that sometimes files have a foam core so they have more flexibility and it is just straight edge it doesn't have like this is the other file that I have out it doesn't have this curve to it so it's going to give you much cleaner smile lines and when you're filing you want to keep it perpendicular to the nail to get the best crisp most clean smile lines out there so we're going to just file these. And the great thing with working with gel over acrylic is that not just poly gel, but all gel is easier to file than acrylic is. So if you're somebody that does not use an e-file, then switching over to gel may just save you some effort from filing. Unless, of course, it, you can't sculpt as well with it, and then you end up doing more filing because of that. But if you are just doing stuff like this, it's really pretty effortless to file. So now we're going to look at this, make sure, look at it straight down from the top of it. Make sure that the smile line looks smooth and even. If it does not, go back in with your file, do a little bit more. Go around the tip of it. And then once you're happy with your smile line, which I'm going to call this one, we're just going to Grab a nail brush, remove dust, and then we can use our gel polish. If you don't want to use gel polish and you want to use just, you know, strength products all, you know, for the whole thing, then you can do something like a UV resin that is white or whatever color you want or a builder gel that's a color. But for us, we're going to use some hot pink gel polish. So we'll go through and just paint the tip. And then 
felt like from the sides or down. And as you're doing this, you can kind of paint, you can even paint over the top of the enhancement, like you can go like that, and that's not a big deal. So if you don't want to be super neat and clean, you really don't need to be or worry about it. It doesn't have to be perfect. So we're going to paint it like so. This is probably going to need a second coat on it. But this is a great way to do encapsulations because this color is super thin. So if you wanted to build in like a layer of glitter, really easy. So we're going to throw that in the lamp for Madame Glam's are 30 seconds, but whatever your gel polish is. I really like that Madame Glam's is 30 seconds because it speeds up my services actually quite a bit, I think, with that being 30 seconds. And since I mentioned glitter encapsulation, I'm not going to, you know, turn that down. So I think I'll we'll put in a couple of these little stars. And we have a hot pink. So we think black stars? Black stars sound like a good plan to everybody. Yeah, those will be pretty. Just open that up. I'm gonna grab a little rhinestone picker to help out with this. And then we get to also play with some jewelry gel. So we'll do that in a second. First, we're gonna do a second coat of the pink. So let's throw another coat. Oh, it's so much brighter with that second coat. As you can see, I didn't try to do one full coat and speed up the process by not having to do a second coat. You really wanna to try to take nice, slow, even coats of color. And if this is on a client and their finger comes down lower and you can't just paint this all the way up, then you're going to want to get out a art brush and paint it up with a brush so that you don't get gel polish on their skin right here because that is a really easy place to do it. So there we go, two coats of gel polish on the tip, back in the lamp, another 30 seconds, and then I'm gonna get out my jewelry gel because as, oh, I just hit my nail on my tripod. All right, so there we go. There we, we've got our jewelry gel, super thick, very sticky stuff. And I use this um, anytime I attach rhinestones or crystals to anybody. And it has made a huge difference. If you are somebody that tends to lose them or you're afraid to lose them, I know that there's a lot of brands now that have some version of jewelry gel or glue gel. All right, turn that off. Huh, okay. So now that we have this, we're going to take our jewelry gel and does not, there we go. Take just a little bit of it. It is very, very thick. So can I see the amount on my brush? Not a lot at all. I'm gonna hold my tip down so it doesn't fall off my stand. I'm just gonna brush it on. We don't want it thick. It doesn't have to, in this circumstance, you don't want it thick. When you're attaching some rhinestones or crystals, I do put like a little glob of it down so that it kind of wraps right around the top of my crystals, but just a tiny touch of it for a little glitter placement. Okay, we're gonna grab a black one. We're just gonna place them down. And if you, I know that glitter placement can take a long time and be very time consuming, but if you use this jewelry gel, it goes so fast because you don't, they just stick wherever you put them. You don't have to worry about them moving on you, which is really what takes a long time is when they don't behave and they go where they're not supposed to. So now that we have that, we gotta cure this again. This time is going to be uh, a, um, a minute. And for, the, yes, there is a dotted square in my screen, right like that. That is my focus area on my, on, you know, my camera. And I did some research trying to figure out if I could make it go away. And it turns out, no, I cannot because I wanted it to go away and I was, because I noticed it with the last stream and I wasn't going to mess around with it while I was in the middle of the live stream, but I thought I'd fix it for this new one. And it turns out I can't do it. My camera is not, um, not set up to get rid of it apparently, but it is what it is. And I try to keep it within, within the thing, but yeah, it is a little frustrating. I agree. And we'll see if I can figure it out. At least you guys don't see um, 
because it's what my screen would show if I had my camera screen on. There isn't like a whole bunch of different, you know, depth perception and <laughs> things that my camera's thinking about during this whole thing. Okay, we had our one minute cure for our, our little sparkles there. Now we're going to switch to our builder gel. So this is the one, like I said, if you pretend you're working at Dairy Queen and you tip it on its side, it starts to run pretty much immediately. That's going to be a builder gel. And builder gels are self-leveling, which in this circumstance is fantastic. So we're gonna do, we're gonna fill in this tip with two coats, two layers of it. We're gonna grab a nice glob of it. Hard for me to get enough with one dip because this is such a large nail tip. I should have gotten a smaller one. We're gonna kind of do the same thing, not just really quickly rushing it into any of the spots because that's going to create some air bubbles. Instead, we're going to slowly kind of work it down, especially since we do have those glitter bits, our little stars in there. It's going to, it would be easy to get air bubbles if you try to rush it. So there we go. I'm going to go all the way up into those corners and then bring it down. And then as soon as we have it there, can you guys see how much smoother that applied than the sculpture gel? It's a lot easier to work with. So if you aren't sculpting a French tip, I would leave the sculpture gel out of your life. But otherwise we've got just like that. And then we're going to cure this for another minute. Throw that bad boy into the lamp. And so I said I never used this gel brush. I couldn't find the one that I typically use, but I'm actually really happy with this one. And it has no labels on it, so I don't even know where it came from. I just I just found it. So that's interesting little happenstance. So as you, this is something to look at, my towel, while we're waiting for that thing to cure. You can see where I've been, where I've been wiping is primarily in this type of a zone. If you're doing a full set on somebody, it's just, you know, kind of, human nature to keep wiping in the same spot. You don't want to do that. So what I like to do is after every step, I rotate my towel and then I put my dap and dish back down. So I use a different section. And then when I, if I get to the point where it's just too, there's just too much happening here, I'll unfold and refold my paper towel and I'll get a clean spot. Cause what you want is you don't want to be trying to clean gel off of your brush and get more gel into your brush while you're, you know, cleaning it. Because if you keep wiping, like right there, I've got a lot of gel. If I was to try to wipe it off, it's not going to remove it. It's just, it might replace it. So you don't want to dirty your brush when you're trying to clean it off. Okay, we can do one more coat. One more little layer of our builder gel. It won't have to be too much. I'm just trying to bring it up to the same height as the nail bed. And with doing enhancements like this you can build layers into it so if you wanted to make this like if you were thinking of it as a galaxy with the little stars you could have done like a little swirl of white in there to add another layer of depth to your galaxy or whatever between these layers of gel if you don't want them to just be pesky layers that you're having to deal with you can add some art into it into each of the layers so now we got that Okay, now we're going to cure this one more time. See, it's got the same height now. That's what you're looking for. So I'm going to, first, I'm going to try to get as much of the Builder Gel out of my brush because this stuff is not cheap. And you don't want to waste it if you can help it. I don't know for sure how much the In Vogue products are, but I know that it isn't unheard of for a jar this size, which is one U.S. fluid ounce, to be 50 bucks. Like I said, I don't know for sure what on Vogue's pricing is, and it probably depends on the distributor and, you know, the country that you're in, but it's just, it's not a cheap type of product. And I, my, my bottles of, this is the gel bottle ink. These are 25 a piece. Usually there are sometimes sales and different things. And I've gotten some on clearance, which I was really excited about. I have a couple different cover paint colors that I got on clearance. And this is 0.67 of a fluid ounce. So it's it's about, oh, I'd say it's 
It's a little bit bigger than your Madame Glam bottle or what I consider to be a decent size bottle of gel polish, which is half an ounce, but it's not as big as a jar. And I honestly don't think you can get every last bit of gel out of a uh, filter in a bottle. So you have to kind of balance all that stuff out when you're looking at it. So now that we have our enhancement fully done, we're going to cleanse it. This is some more isopropyl alcohol. Mine is 99%. And then we're going to cleanse this again. Make sure that it's not tacky, no inhibition layer, super smooth. And I was absolutely intending to put a layer of base coat down on this before I started sculpting it, just to show you guys that you would always want to, if this is on a human, to put a layer of base coat on before you start sculpting, because that's just a critical first step in it, since you know, it's not going to stick. That's the kind of the thing. Gel products are not going to stick without base coat. So you don't want to forget that step. We're going to file this just with a hand file because it is gel and it files easy. If you want to get out an e-file, go for it. I kind of like filing gel with a hand file on my clients. I never use an e-file for finished filing. I just use the e-file in the beginning to remove, you know, encapsulations or the gel polish that's on top and if there does happen to be any lifting remove that and blend the old product down into their natural nail but even then I don't use much of an e-file on them either just just basically removing the art is what my e-file is used for so one of my little tricks with acrylic is to remove these little scratches that the files leave behind is to wipe it down with acetone but gel is does not get dissolved by acetone so you can't do that so I will be buffing this when we're done I'm just gonna get rid of my little stand and file this When I'm filing on a client and I have my gel enhancements, I don't even always file all of their nails either. And with that builder in a bottle and most of my clients have, it's just an overlay over their natural nails, then I don't have to kind of worry about it because my sculpting, it's basically just like painting a nail, but with a thicker product. So I just file if there's anything that needs it which is really nice because it makes it really quick and easy for doing them. Okay. Tip looks pretty good there. So I see one person, um, Vivian, said that she would love to use gel more, but she gets frustrated with it. And I totally get that because, like I said, it's sculpting something that is precise out of honey texture. I hope you guys can hear me over the filing sounds. But that, I mean, yeah, it is definitely an aggravating experience. And I would say most of that comes down to experience and you kind of have to push through that frustrated stage, but some people just aren't going to like gel. And if, you know, if you just don't like gel, maybe don't put your focus into that and just try to use other products because it's not for everybody. Just like acrylic isn't for everybody. There are going to be, I remember when I was in nail school, there was four of us. It was such a huge class, but there was four of us and it was perfectly split. Two of the four were like, acrylic is amazing. I could use acrylic all day. And two of the four were all four using gel. All right, well that's not perfect, but it's looking pretty good. So now I'm going to use just a white um, polar buffer. I'm going to buff over this. Kind of get rid of some of those pesky little scratches. Go over it this way. You don't have the luxury if you're working on yourself or a client to just turn the nail around, but when you aren't, it is so easy to just spin it around. So that's pretty good. You don't have to get rid of all the scratches. We're going to wipe this again with alcohol. Ooh, that was a lot of alcohol. A lot of alcohol. It sounds like we're doing a different kind of video here. Um, it's 
stick this back on my yikes, back on my little nail stand. I'm going to use my dust brush to remove any last little remaining bits of dust that there may be, and then we're going to throw on some top coat. Okay, apply it. The great, I would say the greatest thing about gel and the best thing about gel is its clarity because you cannot get the same clarity out of acrylic. If you want something to be clear like glass, then a gel is just the way to go. I mean, look at how, look at how those stars look like they're almost floating inside that enhancement. You cannot get that level of clarity with with acrylic you just it just doesn't do it so if you're hesitant to use gel and you're frustrated by gel and you can't stand you can't stand it because it's a pain which I understand then you know maybe just the fact that you can get this beautiful clarity will be the encouragement you need to really start trying it so there's the first nail that we're going to be using that one is in the lamp I'm going to swipe off some of that dust Beautiful. Now we can look at our next one. So the next one we're going to be doing, like I said, is with poly gel. And if you are, you know, you're an acrylic person and you love acrylic, poly gel is much closer to working with acrylic than a soft gel is like those ones that, like the, you know, sculpture and builder gels. So let's see, which one do we want to use for our, okay, we're going to use this one, this gel too, because even though you know, the 4D gel, it's not. So we're going to use that one just so I can prove that it isn't what it says it is. I don't really like this one. In fact, yeah, okay, there we go. Well, I, I don't mind it. I just don't like the fact that I think it's incorrectly named. So you can use this little knife cutter tool and you can, you know, squeeze out a section and cut it off. I do that if I need just a little bit or if I'm trying to be as sanitary from client to client it's just a little actually I don't know it's not really any cleaner but if I need a lot I just go straight from the tube because it eliminates a step so we're going to squeeze it out I think that this one is maybe a little thicker than some other acro gels but it is thinner than the original gelish poly gel my little thing came off The original, oh my goodness, I'm going to be making a huge mess. The original one, the Gelish Poly Gel, is by far the thickest of all the poly gels that are out there, as far as what I have used. And it is not, I don't know, it is not easy to use. I like almost any other brand I've tried better than that one. So now you can use this same solution, but I do have the Gel 2's what they call theirs sculpting, sculpting solution. Ooh, the silver foil writing does not show up well, but they have, they have that one. So we're gonna use that. It is neon pink. Like you think it would almost be radioactive. It is so pink. And it actually leaves a pink hue on the nail, which I think is an odd choice for them. But as you can see, you really almost have to press this out because it does not move on its own and it does not move easily. There's no like little swirlies to get it to go where, where you want it to go. You have to kind of bully it is what I think of always. So we're gonna bully our poly gel. Oh yeah, yeah, it's going to fall off my little stand again. I'm going to bully our poly gel into place like that. And you can kind of brush it too. You don't have to just push it. If Melody was around, she'd go, Mama, don't growl. Does anybody else deal with these particular issues with their nail systems? The nail wants to fall off the little stand. That's actually one thing that I run into a lot when I'm sculpting with poly gel and it's not on an actual nail is that because of how much force you have to use when you're applying it, it knocks my tip off the holder. So as you can see, if you were sculpting a nail bed, this product would do it beautifully because you don't have to worry about it 
moving. You can sculpt some really good height on your pre-edge. And so if you do want to sculpt nail beds, you may, and you don't really want to use poly gel for other parts of your service or your design, it might just be the thing for the nail bed. Oh my goodness. I have to fix this after it cures so it actually sticks down. Hang at it. Okay. Hopefully that's the last time I have to deal with that, with it falling off. I'm just going to keep pressing it. It kind of fills in where it has to go, where it needs to go. Okay, that is by no means perfect because I can't smooth it out with the way that this is. But typically I will sculpt an entire enhancement with one layer of poly gel. I will not go through and try to do more than one layer unless after I go and um, I'm, you know, I'm examining it. I'm like, oh my goodness, there's a huge dip. Like mine has a huge dip where I keep pressing it onto my stand. Um, then I would go through and add a second coat of it. So we're just going to cure this so I don't have to keep messing with it. And then we will see how it goes. So that's going to be a minute. The original Gelish Poly Gel, and I actually don't know if all the other ones claim this, but it says that it is um, heat spike resistant. So if you guys have ever worked with gel, you should probably be familiar with what heat spikes is. Um, and so when you're curing a product, you're curing your gel, it creates this hot feeling on the nail plate. And in, you know, so if you've got, if these are the two polymers, pretend these are your polymers in your gel, when it's a liquid or a soft form, they're all just kind of loosey-goosey and they're not but then all of a sudden they hit that lamp and they go and they really quickly they like snap together and it's this almost like flipping motion and it flips and it snaps and they all snap together and they create this solid surface. When that happens, it can create almost like a pulling sensation on, on the nail or it can, you know, create a heat feeling and some lamps just feel hot. They have, you know, a hot feeling. I pull it up. I pull it out and it's, there we go. Um, so people were asking about my poster putty. There was no alcohol in this poster putty because I still have that nail is separate. That's why that one's not sticking. This one, I just need to rearrange it because I use the same stuff over and over again until it really won't stick. And I probably could use some more of it on there. But yeah, so we'll just grab another glob of it. but um, that is what the heat spike sensation is. And if you have ever experienced a really bad one, it's not something that you're ever going to want to do again because it hurts. It feels like your nail is not going to be attached to your finger anymore when it comes out. And most products out there now say that they are either heat spike resistant or there's a lot of lamps that say that they are heat spike resistant, that they have like a slow cure setting on it. The one that I have has that. It's got this 90 second button that's supposed to build up the intensity of the curing over the course of like the first 30 seconds until it, it reaches that full strength. And that's supposed to reduce the heat spikes. But if you don't have a lamp that does that and you do have a product that has heat spikes, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to flash cure. So you're going to put your hand in for three seconds and then put your hand in for five seconds and put your hand in for 10 seconds and then you can put it in. So you're going to do it in like short bursts, which is going to just allow some recovery time. And you know, you can play around with what the timing is, maybe just a 10 second flash cure and then a full cure is what you're going to need to do. So we're going to do two coats of our poly gel so that we can get this nice and smooth. And this is a pretty long nail tip. So I didn't have enough the first time anyway. So when you're sculpting with the poly gel, you have to kind of pull it into place. And if you have extra, this is more where I find that little cutting tool is, if you're, or where it is helpful, is that if you do have extra at the end of it, at the end of your sculpting, and it's on the tip of the nail, you pull it all down and you stretch it down towards the tip of the nail. You can, I don't really have that much extra. I'm getting pretty good at the measurement 
then you can cut it off like that. And you can get a really nice, clean, crisp tip there. So I'm just gonna pat that in, kind of brush it down, keep playing around with it if you need to. And then as soon as you're happy with it, you can cure it and stick it in the ring. I'm prone to continue to mess with poly gel forever because when I do work with acrylic, which this is kind of similar to, you can't do that. You can't just keep working on it forever, but I always pretty much play around with my acrylic until it tells me I can't because if you don't do that, sometimes it'll move on you when you're done. So I just keep making sure it's where I want it until it won't let me anymore. And then with poly gel, I kind of still do the same thing where I keep manipulating it forever and ever and ever. And it just... Yeah, until I'm like, you dope, you can cure this. It's fine now. Go ahead. So we're going to have that in the lamp. I'm going to, when that's done, I'm going to file it really quickly just to smooth it out. And then we can talk about gel polish application. When you're just using a straight gel polish from the bottle with no extra fanciness. Because it, you know, especially if you're not used to working with gel in different ones, there's a lot of little things that may come up. The biggest one is that depending on your brand is that you really need to shake them. And the great thing that I really like about Madame Glam is that you do not need to shake them. Just like how I stirred my modeling resin before I sculpted my French tip, same basic process you need to mix your gel polish up. And there's even, I think there's a couple companies that made special machines that are gel mixing machines that hold three or five bottles and then you can stick them in there and they shake them up for three minutes or something to remix them. But Madame Glam's do not separate very much. So if you do have one that separates a lot, just make sure that you do mix them up. And if it's a bottle that I haven't used recently, I still shake it. And usually if you're trying to figure out the time to shake it, if you're working with a client, now the alcohol is going to mess up my holder system. Um, if you are working with a client and you know you have their color picked out, and they want to know, you know, they're trying to decide on a, a pattern or a design, that's the perfect time to be shaking their bottles. That sounds kind of funny, but you know, you can just go through and shake them as you're talking to them or as one color is curing, shake the other color or just find those, those right moments. So I don't know if you guys can tell how quickly this is filing into shape. It's almost, it's just crazy how soft poly gel is or acro gel or 40 gel or velveteen gel or wildflowers paste all right flip that around file this again one brand that i find separates really easy for gel polish is the um gelish i think that is one of the worst ones for separation okay so almost there and then I'm going to buff this one too just to make sure that it is going to give us just the best application for our gel polish all right that's good enough for me buffer block once again so doesn't gel shaking gel polish add bubbles to it it you know it's kind of one of those situations where Bubbles are more of an issue for traditional lacquer and gel polish won't typically bubble as bad. A lot of these things, brands have specific temperaments as you know, they all have their own little wants and needs. And so some of them may really need to be shaken. Like that gelish is, oof, that needs to be shook. Some of them you can get by with, and I can show you how I do this, but just stirring it with the brush. But if you really want to keep your gel polish in the best condition, you're going to want to shake it before you need to use it if you are worried about bubbles. And even if that's like five minutes ahead, or if you have a little client consult before you get started with, with their service, like before you do their enhancement and or their manicure, if it's a natural nail service, and you can do... A little bit of a client consult find out what colors are gonna want pick out their colors shake them and then have them just set during that but otherwise a little bit of stirring works but for the most part gel polish does not bubble it 
it usually keeps a pretty nice consistency and nice texture without having to worry too much. All right, so if you're going to stir your gel polish with the brush, you can open it up, have it so that the cap is loose, but don't pull the brush out, and then just rotate it around like this. I actually do this, this is with Madame Glam's if I do feel like I need to mix it. There's just a couple colors that I found that with. And glitter, if you have a glitter gel polish, I shake it between hands. I close it and I reshake it because the glitter will sink no matter what. But that'll give you a nice, smooth, even color without having bubbles at all. But it really, I've never had problems with my gel polish bubbling. And we're going to take and we're going to apply a layer of base coat on top of this. And it's really not, it isn't required to put a layer of base coat on top of an enhancement like this. The gel will stick just fine to the gel. But if you want the best possible application with the smoothest texture, you're going to want to base coat it. Especially if you don't buff. If you didn't buff this nail, you would definitely want to apply base coat. Because otherwise that gel polish is going to settle into those little cracks and it's going to give you some pretty interesting textures. And you don't want that, you want this to be smooth. So we've got just a little layer of base coat, like that, thin. Whenever you're applying gel base coat, you want to be thin. A lot of brands, not this one, of course, but a lot of brands, their gel base coat, their brushes are considerably smaller. I know Gelish's is that way, and so is Koopa's. Their uh, base coat brush is about half the size. And that's to prevent over application because when you're applying some gel base coat, you want it to be as thin a layer as possible, especially when it's going directly on a natural nail. So before you apply your enhancement, you do need to put gel base coat on, but it is just a teeny tiny amount. You don't want to like float it at all or add too much or do anything because that's not its purpose. So if you do just the thinnest coat, that's going to give you the best strength and the best longevity for your enhancement which I actually wish all brands would take Q and make their little bottle brushes for their base coat uh, shorter and just a little bit, um, I guess, stiffer maybe, more like a scrubby texture, if that makes any sense, instead of very soft. If they were just a little harder, that would be fantastic. So now we have our base coated little thing here. Now we're going to take gel polish. So this goes for regular polish or gel polish. The way I take my brush out of the bottle is I will swirl it around and get pretty much as much off of it as I can and then wipe it almost completely clean. And then I go back and I dip in and get the amount that I would that I need, which might seem ridiculous, but I feel like I have a lot better control that way. I'm gonna re-dip and get it so that I've got about half my brush covered. Now this is actually, this that would be for a normal note. This is a long nail, so I'm gonna cover my whole brush. Go up, start out away from the cuticle here. We're gonna, we're gonna zoom in on this. Okay, so you start out and you're not, you don't just start out here, like up above the cuticle. You're going to start out away from the cuticle and then push the gel up and then bring it down. So the same thing for the next spot, you're going to push the gel up and bring it down, push it up, bring it down. The reason for this is that you're still preventing, this is all about prevention, you're preventing yourself from flooding the cuticle. So when you flood the cuticle, that's when you have this huge gob of product that actually goes underneath the cuticle or over the cuticle. And so you want to just press it up so it goes a quarter of a millimeter away but does not touch the skin. Bring it down on the side, bring it down on the other side. Also, when you start here and then you push up, do you see how my brush fanned? And how it's gonna, when it pushes up, it's gonna give a nice curve. If you try to just go straight like this, the brush is really flat. So the more you do that where you have it fat down and then you push it up, it's going to just give you a, a better cuticle application on repeat. It's just for so many reasons. So I'm just going to go over and smooth this out like so. Now on what I can see is it looks like this nail is completely covered with, you know, one coat, but it is going to need a second coat. So we'll do that. So we're going to put this in for 30 seconds. And then while that's doing that, if anybody wants to have any input in the design we're going to do, because I am going to do a little bit of artsiness on here, I'm going to, I've got some white and black 
gel paint out to play with. And then I also have my Wildflowers lace paste. And this is white, I believe. Let me just double check. Yeah, white lace paste. So if anybody wants any input, like, I don't know, maybe we could do some little swirlies and a couple pretty flowers or, I don't know, nothing too crazy, but we can have some fun. So we've got that. I'm going to apply second coat. If anyone has any input, let me know on the art. When I go and I do these corners with my brush, a lot of times I like to tip it to the side and kind of swipe it around to get them nice and even and smooth. All right, so there we go. Got that covered. Put it in the lamp again. Okay, so I have a question back from a little bit that says, do I use the poly gel over a tip or over a form? And you can do it either way. Um, if I'm, I don't use tips. Uh, the only time I use tips is when I'm doing a practice tip for a video or a demonstration or practice. The lace paste is our 4D gel. That's the 4D gel. Um, but so if I, you know, if I, you can use it over a tip. There's no problem with doing, doing it over a tip. I just personally don't use them. If it's on myself or a client, I'm going to use a form because I have a little bit more control. All right, so I'm going to grab all my stuff here again. I'm going to, I didn't get any response on input on our art, so I'm just going to open up both of these jars, wait a couple more seconds, see if anybody has any grand ideas. <coughs> out a little bit. Got those two. So this is the this is the gel paint, and we're going to stir it just like I stirred the what is this sculpture gel. And it's hard to tell, like especially with the black, if it even needed to be stirred because it just looks black in there. So I'm going to try to get as much of this stuff off of my spatula as I can. And I do not stir them every time I use them. I'd say I stir them about, I don't know, once weekly or once every other week because they don't separate that quickly. But then I'm gonna wipe off my spatula really well. And I'm going to do the other one. And if you're somebody that's just getting into working with gel, get yourself one of these little spatulas that is, this one is actually the Hand and Nail Harmony. So this is a gelish spatula, but um, it's super thin, which is fantastic. But there's a bunch of different ones. You can just get a little yeah, but then we're going to stir this up again. Stir the white. My white separates faster than the black. I rarely stir my black, actually. The white, I have to stir more often. Give that a stir. Get as much of it off of our spatula so we don't waste any of it. It's like precious gold. If you ask me, it's, yeah, it's probably worth, I don't know how much these are. I do know that if I were to replace these ones from Ugly Duckling, though, they're going to cost a pretty penny because the shipping. They're from, um, they're based in Canada, and I'm in the U.S., so the shipping would be probably more than I would want to spend. Okay, so we've got our brushes. I'm going to use, this is one that is a long narrow brush that I'm going to use and then this one is and this one is just from can I do a flower it can be something other than a rose sure I don't like roses either usually um, but this one is a little bit longer and this one they're just I actually I'm not gonna use that longer one just this one it's a wildflowers magenta brush anybody is curious I don't often me uh, mention the products I'm using because I feel like there's so many you know, alternatives and you can use any brand for the most part. But if you want to know what is I'm using, there you have it. So we're going to do something other than a rose. And it's going to be a flower. So we'll do the flower with the 40, the art gel, or the, yeah, the 40 gel. So before that, we're just going to do a couple of swirls. So I have a, I dipped it into my gel paint and you can see I've got like a pretty big blob of it on the end. So I'm going to place that down and then lessen the weight on the brush and the pressure. So it gets this really nice, ooh, there's so many reflections. There you go. It goes thick to thin. 
and then you can grab another little bit of it, place it down, again, thick to thin, just to create like a nice little kind of swooping pattern. If we're going to do a flower, maybe I can add in a leaf here. I'm completely winging this, by the way, guys. There's no plan here. In fact, I didn't even necessarily know I was going to be doing a little demonstration of art gel, but I can't help myself. There we go. Another couple little lines. So if we have a 3D flower that goes right in that spot, I started in such a weird place on the nail. Okay. We put our 3D flower right there. Then maybe we'll do a little bit more up above it. So another little thick to thin line. This is about the only thing I would say I really like gel paint for is creating this type of a pattern because it creates that shape so easily. And if you want to create that type of a design with these little swooping, I don't even know what to call them, little stripes, then this is definitely the product to do that with. more like so. I'm actually gonna make one of these a little swirl. Swirl up and around. Just like that. Like connect the dots. Okay, so that's what we're going to do because we're gonna stick the flower in the middle of all that. So after I have this, we're going to cure it. I'm gonna put that in my lamp for a minute. I don't remember what the cure time was for this ugly duckling art gel, but a minute sounds like, I mean, that's a pretty standard amount for almost anything. I don't want to stick any black on there. I want to keep this kind of light and airy. And so now that we have that done, I wish I had some crystals nearby, but I do not. That's all right. But we'll, maybe we should do like a little clump of glitter so I don't have a crystal. Unless I yanked one off of my own nails, but I'm going to not uh, that box of glitter. I'm fairly organized until I need to find something. Okay, so we have a white flower. Let's see. Something pretty for a glitter. It goes with our pink background. I have a lot of glitter. It's kind of a Okay, I think this looks more promising. We'll use those. Not the prettiest one ever, but. All right. So to do, to add this glitter to it, I'm going to take a little bit of my builder in a bottle on a palette. We're gonna place just a drop of it down and then I'm going to grab a thicker, a thicker brush, which is gonna be this one. I'm gonna grab a little bit of that builder, a little bit of the builder gel, and then I'm gonna dip it right into my glitter. And you don't have to worry about the gel getting into your glitter because it's whatever gel gets, you know, or whatever glitter gets gel on it is going to stick to your brush. So I can place just a little grouping, grouping of glitter down. Close up the glitter, and we're going to have to cure that once again. Every time you do something, you got to cure it. I get really frustrated by gel because of all of the curing. So when I'm doing a gel design, I feel like it takes so much longer because I'm a very fast-paced, moving person when it comes to doing, you know, these types of designs. I don't have to wait and do nothing, and I feel like that's what I'm always doing with gel. So after we have that and that's cured, we're going to use some top coat. I'm using the Wildflowers Top Coat Gel. 
I'm just trying to get rid of it, basically. I really like uh, my favorite top coat and base coat and matte top coat is Koopa's. Like I said before, the Koopa has a really nice short brush for their top coat, which I think, or for their base coat, which I think makes a much smoother application. And their, their top coat is so shiny and their matte top coat is so matte, but they do cure a little bit harder. So if you're doing this over a natural nail, it's not going to move and be as flexible as say Madame Glam's top coat is very, very flexible. So if you want to use something that seems a little bit more um, flexible and natural on a natural nail, then I would not use Koopas. But if you, you know, you like a really hard, strong, stain-proof top coat, then Koopas is the way to go. Okay, you can pull this out of the lamp. Oh, there we go, apply a layer of this top coat. We're gonna do the same thing with the top coat, put it down, push it up around the side. When you're applying top coat, you can apply it ever so slightly thicker than you would your color coat. Not, you don't wanna like, you know, apply a ton or flood anything, but if it just goes on, a, you know, slightly thicker to kind of smooth out the surface of the nail, most top coats, most gel polish top coats are formulated to be slightly thicker and actually fill in any gaps and smooth out the surface of the nail. So we got that one. We're gonna have to cure this again. Guys, there's gonna be one more cure after this. So um, if you are getting sick of all this, hurry up and wait, then we're gonna be done soon with all the curing. While we're doing that, we can actually prepare though. So I'm going to take my lace paste, I'm going to open it up, grab my spatula, I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of it and we're going to roll that into a ball. And um, don't touch it unless you're wearing gloves. So this is a product that you want to have gloves for. Place it down in the oop, in the palm of your gloved hand, and then with a finger, just roll it into a nice little ball and then set it aside. So we're going to put that on a clean spot on my little mat on my table. Grab another similarly sized bit of this lace paste. So if you've never worked with 4D gel and you have never used it at all, this stuff is amazing. Um, if you watched the video that I uploaded on Tuesday, the Dragon Nails, I used 4D gel for that. That was Wildflower's Lace Paste in black. And so it created that Dragon so quickly. So we're gonna roll this again. If you, do, you don't have to use the palm of your hand, it just sometimes is easier. So there's, I'm gonna make five of these. Whenever I'm typically doing gel nails, I do two at a time. So instead of doing the French tip one and then doing this other one, I would have been working on them both simultaneously. So I don't have to sit here and do nothing. It's during the minutes that it's curing. All right, we've got that all rolled. We've got five of those. I'm going to make what I consider to be like your basic five petal flower, which is if I'm just doing a non-specific flower, I always do a five petal flower. So we've got all of those little beads of the lace paste rolled. We've got a fully prepared nail that's just ready to get a flower. All right, so we're going to take, if I can pick it up, cone-shaped silicone tool that just got dusty from my table. And we're going to use it, and it can, we're going to pick up one of our little, one of our little circles of gel, and we're going to set it down with our fingers because that is the easiest way to do it, if you ask me. There's the next one, just place it down there. As soon as it hits the nail, it'll kind of, except for that one, of course, makes me a liar, um, stick to it. It'll sort of find its spot. Grab another one. We've got all of those, oops. All of those pretty much have have their spot now. So we're going to move this one over slightly. Then the silicone tool I'm using is cone shaped. So it's smooth on all sides. It's not like a blade shaped or flat. We're going to press it in and the 40 gel should not crack or break or do anything. And you should be able to get these petals on it very easily. So there's our first petal. You see all the texture that was built into that just by pressing into it? 
And if you want to, you can do individual petals at a time and flash cure them. I don't think that's necessary for just a quick flower like this, but if you wanted to, you certainly could. There's our second petal. This is the fastest way to do a 3D flower. So if you are if you are working in a salon with clients and you want to be able to add an add-on service that is quick and has a wow factor and will make people come to your salon because you can do it, this is a great thing to do because at least where I'm from, there really aren't many people that can do art, not to mention 3D art that is quick and really very beautiful and easy. So if you can do that and you can offer that, you have such an advantage. So there's our next petal. And we're going to do the last one on the side and just fill it in. So your basic little five petal flower, each of my petals I did give like a two side to. And then if you wanted to give it a little bit more detail, you could push in the middle. You could almost give it like a wave in the middle. And just kind of add another little element to it. And if you are trying to do like a specific type of flower, then you would want to look a little bit more closely at what you're doing and try to do a certain one. But if you're just kind of playing around and doing a, a quick, cute flower, then that is a certain, a certainly an easy way to do it. And you could do that with a crystal in the middle of the flower instead of that clumping of glitter. So we're going to cure this one more time. That is going to be another minute. And that is done. So here's our, our first nail that we have that we did that's got that clear encapsulation on the tip. And then we have the second one that's in the lamp right now. Oh, thank you, everybody. We made it. And yes, um, Vivian, the 4D gel is amazing. It is probably my favorite gel product, maybe besides jewelry gel. Those are my... Those are my top two favorite gel products to use even more than gel polish because they're so, they're so artsy and I love things that are artsy. So thank you everyone for sticking with me so far. Thank you to the Muttley crew. Um, I appreciate that so much. It is so kind of you for uh, supporting me and doing these crazy things. I, the first live stream, I didn't have the little donation thing open and I didn't even consider it, I guess. So then everybody told me I should do it last time. So I turned it on and I guess it was worthwhile. But here's our two nails that we did. If you guys did play along with me and have fun and create some fun artsy stuff yourself, I would absolutely love to see them. Uh, last time I had a couple people send me their 3D stuff that, or their, their French tip that they did. And it just warms my heart that you guys actually participated instead of just listening to me drone on about nonsense. And that's just so exciting. And we got a lot of pink going on. I clearly like pink. And I'm just really quickly going to back this up to the tabletop. And I want to show you guys my nails. There will be a tutorial for this up eventually, but I am so in love. I just finished these. They're gorgeous. I know, totally random and kind of crazy, but I just couldn't help it. I'm so excited about them. Um, but yeah, I'm so, I, I'm going to do, like I said, this is a gel basics. If you missed last month's class, that was acrylic basics. If you guys are interested in doing one-on-one -on -one classes with me, um, I can definitely do that. I will have it. It's by like an hourly rate and we can do it via Skype or Zoom. So if you're interested, send me a message to hotpinkzebrapolish at hotmail.com and we can talk schedules and arrangements and those classes can be tailored to exactly what you're looking for. It could be a specific design, it could be a specific product or a technique. Um, if there's something that you just really want to kind of get worked out and if we do it through Skype or Zoom I can see your work as well as you can um, see mine and so we can get a little bit more of a one-on-one -on -one going. So that's always an option if you're interested. And then yeah next month we're going to be doing another one of these. I don't know what the theme is going to be yet but it's going to be the third thursday of the month i'll have to start figuring out the themes these things take so much of a production for me to put together i have to plan them for weeks but we'll figure out what the theme is pretty soon because i have to get started on it and yeah so if you guys want to come back next month i would be so happy to see you and um to ashley i i do have a paypal i can um if you want to send me an email, I can send you what my PayPal is if you really want to do that. Otherwise, I am just really happy to, to be doing these for you. I have so much fun.
talking nail products. But we will be back next next month on the third Thursday. It's the 18th again, just because of February's 28-day weirdness. So yeah, I'll see you guys all all next month with a brand new subject to be playing around with. And it's going to be something artsier, not the basics. It's going to be something a little bit 